Now there will be people on the other side of the spectrum. They will say that, hey Akshat, you know what? You went to INSEAD, great business school, rank number one. Your life would have been very easy. You probably did not even have to work a day in your life to make money after you graduated from INSEAD. So that could not be farther from the truth. Hello everyone, welcome to today's video. So on today's video, we are going to systematically analyze the value of going to a good university slash building a strong resume. Whether or not this is important, should you even consider going to a university in this day and age? We will look at both the sides of the argument. So if you analyze the social media chatter, the first thing that you will find out is that a lot of people are saying that, you know what, degrees are dead. There is just no point in going and completing your education, wasting your time and getting a degree. Why waste so much time and effort going to a university? If you analyze the life of people like Bill Gates, Mark Zuckerberg, they dropped out of Harvard. In India, if you take a look at Mukesh Ambani, he dropped out of Stanford. So what's even the point of going to a university anymore? My simple response there is that these people had the ability to get into these top universities to begin with. So that itself calls for a little bit of credit there. That's point one. But second, I understand your argument, what you're trying to make, that you're trying to say that, hey, you know what, in this day and age, skills are more important than your degree or your resume. I agree to that statement. Now there will be people on the other side of the spectrum. They will say that, hey, Akshat, you know what, you went to INSEAD great business school, rank number one, your life would have been very easy. You probably did not even have to work a day in your life to make money after you graduated from NCR. So that could not be farther from the truth. I was fortunate to get into a really good business school. It helped me in my career, but that does not mean that I did not have to work really hard or build my skill set. I definitely had to put in a lot of effort. Even now, you see me being consistent in my YouTube journey. So the point is that both the perspectives on the extreme end are incorrect, right? On one hand of the spectrum, people believe that, hey, you know what, university degrees and resume building is dead. There is just no point in running after building your resume. This perspective is also incorrect. And on the flip side, just assuming that because you are from a really good undergrad or a graduate program, your life is set, even that perspective is incorrect. Like most practical truths in life, the value of a degree or value of building a resume lies somewhere in the middle of the spectrum. That it is important to build your resume up to a certain point and it is also equally important to develop your skill set. So let me ask you a very simple question. The question is that what according to you is the primary benefit of having a very strong resume? Please answer this in the comment section. According to me, the primary benefit of having a very strong resume is that it generates something called a signaling effect. Right? Signaling effect in simple terms means it acts as a pull factor. Right? For example, I graduated from INSEAD and INSEAD being a good business school, it attracted or pulled a lot of brands to its campus for recruitments. So that is one pull factor. When I moved ahead in my career, I started different ventures. A lot of investors started reaching out to us again because of the pull factor that INSEAD brought with it. Now, this was not exclusively due to INSEAD, but what I'm trying to tell you is that INSEAD did play a critical role in my career in terms of helping me get a job, in terms of helping me develop a network, in terms of pulling those investors to me when I started my own ventures. This signaling effect or this pull factor becomes very prominent if you have good brands on your CV. Now, if you ask me that, hey, Akshat, you know what? Building this pull factor, can you only do it by going to top tier universities or working with firms like Dalberg or BCG? The short answer is no, right? There is another method of creating this pull factor and it is called as skill development. Now, if you put in a lot of effort, time, work in terms of honing and sharpening relevant skills for yourself, you might be able to build that pull factor also. But in order for your skills to become a pull factor, you need to be well known. For example, if let's say that you start your YouTube journey, right? And people are really impressed with the way that you speak, the way you analyze stuff. It will take you years and years to build your following, right? Only then you will be able to build that pull factor by utilizing your skill set. Right? So in summary, what I'm trying to tell you is very, very simple. If you have really strong brands on your CV in terms of the internships that you have done, in terms of jobs that you have done, in terms of undergraduate and graduate programs that you have pursued, all these are brand indicators that act as a pull factor. And this is a shortcut to developing that pull factor on your profile, right? This is the hard cold truth of today's world that the world is super competitive. People do not have time to sit and analyze your skill set and your resume all day long. So they look for these signaling effect or pull factors on your profile. So therefore, going to a top university or working with top brands really helps you out in terms of developing this pull effect. 
You can also do this by working really hard, but it is likely to take you a lot of time. Now, let me help you further consolidate this point by giving you a relevant example. Now, in certain industries, for example, private equity, banking, management, consulting, what happens is that people are really, really pressed on time. In my case, I used to analyze resumes for people to get shortlisted. What happens in the management consulting industry is that a partner would come. They will say that, hey, Akshat, you know what? Here is an entire deck of resume, this much thick, and you have to analyze it by the end of the day. I would have probably one hour to scout through those resumes. So how much time do you think that I would be spending on a resume? Do type it out in the comment section. Unfortunately, I would not be able to dedicate more than 30 seconds to 60 seconds to see one resume, right? Now, I don't have all day to analyze all this stuff because this is additional work for an analyst or associate at a management consulting firm. So we scan these resume at a very brisk pace. So which leads me to ask you a question that what do you think that I would look for if I'm scanning through a resume? I would look for brands. I would look for those strong signaling effect. If you don't have brands, it's okay. But then you need to demonstrate through your work, how you have added massive value to the organizations you have been a part of. So trying to project that you have very impressive skill set, it becomes a very hard thing to do if the other person is not spending insane amount of time analyzing your resume. So this is a practical point that you need to keep in mind. And the key takeaway here is that in certain industries, your resume becomes extremely important. What are these industries? I'll quickly recap. These are private equity, investment banking, management consulting. These are primary industries in which unless you have a strong resume, it becomes tough for you to get past the initial screening process. This is not because people are lazy and they don't want to scan through your resume and read every point. It is just that, that they are pressed extremely hard on time. Now, if you ask me that, hey, Akshat, do you think this stuff will continue in the future? The short answer is, unfortunately, yes. A lot of people give the argument that, hey, we might move to an ATS based screening process of CVs etc. It happens only for certain set of industries. If you're looking at elite jobs, humans are going to scan your resume and they will always, always, always be pressed on time. And therefore, that signaling effect, what I was talking earlier about, it becomes extremely important for you to take care of. So this brings us to the golden question that, hey, if my resume is bad, what is it that I should be doing? So you should be doing two things. So number one, you should figure out a way to turn around your bad resume. For example, if let's say that you are in the first year and you have not done well in your exams and you have not participated in any extracurricular activity, you are attending a really low ranked undergraduate program, it is fine. It is not end of the world. What you need to do is that you need to figure out that, hey, I realize the importance of building my resume. So you start participating in those activities. Try to get some international experience if possible. Try to scout for good internships. Try to get a high GMAT GRE score while in college itself. All these become indicator and signaling effect. Imagine this, if you are at an undergraduate program, which is very low ranked, right? But if you have a 750, 760 GMAT, and you put that on your resume while scouting for internships, it acts as what? It acts as a positive signaling effect. So keep that in mind that there are multiple avenues for you to build out your profile. Number one, you can get a high standardized test score. Number two, you can try to scout for some international opportunities and options. For example, earlier I spoke about the fact that Cases Over Coffee, one of the companies in which I have invested, it runs a Cases Over Coffee Global Fellowship. It allows you to develop and interact your global acumen and get global experiences. These are unique. These become great talking points on your resume. Try to scout for really strong internships. Try to write a research paper, research report with your professor. These are some basic stuff that you need to start participating on. So this is the first thing that try to salvage your resume and try to turn things around for your resume. Now, the second option is that you tell me that, hey, Akshat, you know what? I'm in final year. I have completely messed up my undergrad. I don't know what to do next. In that scenario, you have no other option but to build your skill set first. So try to become really adept and skilled at doing something, be it public speaking, be it writing, be it coding, be it machine learning, be it artificial intelligence, whatever you pick as your skill set, try to get really, really good at it. Try to become a specialist at a certain domain that will help you more. If you turn around and say that, hey Akshat, you know what? I'm not interested in building my skill set. And B, I come from a bad college and I have no brands on my CV. What are you indicating? You are indicating number one, that A, you don't have any good signaling effect going for you. So of course the resume will not get picked. And number two, you are refusing to build your skill set that can actually eventually create a pull factor for you, right? So here are three simple lessons that I will leave you with. Hopefully this will act as an indicator for you to work a little bit harder. 
first and foremost i call it the top 5 percentile rule right so percentile means that if 100 people ran the race and you stood fifth then you are ahead of 95 percentile people right so your percentile becomes 95th percentile that is how cat exam is graded right on percentile basis gmat exam is graded on percentile basis so whatever you are pursuing be it youtube being be it writing a book be it being good at academics try to be in that top 5 percentile that is where the major benefits are accrued number 2 you might say that hey akshar i don't know if i'll be in top 5 percentile of anything that i do not true right every person is good at some things and they are bad at some things right so you need to identify what are some good things that you are really good at and are willing to work hard towards right you really really need to spend time in terms of identifying the things in which you can get into that top 5 percentile so doing that self analysis self reflection and identifying areas where you can be in that top 5 percentile is an important exercise that you need to sit and do third and finally i am a big proponent of working hard working smart working in a targeted fashion so learn about productivity learn about time management learn about optimization learn about structured thinking learn about effective communication these are all basic basic things that will be required for you going forward so i hope you enjoyed the video right please give it a thumbs up that would indicate to me that you would want me to continue making these type of videos and i will see you tomorrow